So a couple things. What are we to do? There are two arms of, of social transformation. This recreating the new, building the new in the shell of the old, with new ways of lifestyle, community, uh, business, etc. While the other arm is the nonviolent resistance. Massive, uh, massive non-cooperation is the biggest image. Massive non-cooperation. Demonstrations, boycotts, divestment, and so on. So here are a few ideas. We need to boldly proclaim that we must build creative non-violent alternatives. End the violence. End uh, the encounter to the violent assault coming at us. Talk to ordinary people. We must build non-violent alternatives to the violence that's assaulting us and the earth. Teach people the power of alternatives to, to violence. We should make our mantra, follow the money. Tell and teach everyone that the money and resources are there. It's amazing. When I mention this, it's just kind of in a vacuum. And it goes on with the same agenda. People don't hear it. Why? It's so obvious. The resources are being stolen. The money's there. Give catchy stats, like the one top 1% 1 owns as much as the bottom 95% of us. What? Break the silence about the reality of this. Uh, that major corporations pay little, if any, taxes and so on. All of this in the not, there, there are 400 billionaires in the United States now, approximately. This is outrageous. OK, another thing is we in the peace movement need to get out of our comfort zone, reach out to every kind of group and organization that is trying and that is involved in some way to change things. Old movements that have been around, as well as new movements. So the people at the demonstrations at state capitals. This is a new agenda, a new group of people that we need to be talking with. We need to talk with them. A basic gift we have is the nonviolent vision and the power of nonviolent for change. And telling the stories, reminding people of the stories of nonviolence. I mean, things are going on in many cities, like in Detroit, there are all kinds of things. It's such a devastated city. Things are happening. Uh, we need to be doing that more and more and more. Invite ourselves to the neighborhood organizations, orgs planning these demonstrations, uh, uh, people doing campaigns for change, like Save the Bears, Save the Children, Political Independence. Labor organizing groups, save our planet groups, health care reform, welfare rights, and bullying. We, we need to be in communication with them and, and giving the gifts we have to offer as we join with them. We need to talk about the common good. Remember the common good? The idea that everyone has a right. That's getting lost on ordinary people that have been so brainwashed. The common good. Good. Getting back to that. Seriously learn how to market the way we talk and get in touch with ordinary people. Tap into their feeling oppressed, how they're outraged, how the governments betrayed them. Do better. Build, uh, build on their disillusionment. Uh, create the feeling they're on a journey in community together. How do we build that sense of community with the disillusionment? Seize the moment, carpe diem. Support groups, you know, uh, when, when doing presentations and social media. How are we communicating? Do better and how we draw people in. Specific, specific things they can be doing. Make them an offer they can't refuse. We need to nurture new, responsible young leaders. Box Christie is doing that. I'm delighted how an MPT, we have interns each semester, and it has been awesome for them. It has, some have said it's changed their lives. I'm in awe. But we need to be bringing in new leaders, like Pax Christie is honoring Katie Garrison today, uh, give ordinary people hope. Uh, OK, moving on. Um, last thing. Here's a possible scenario. I'm going to run through it briefly. Over many decades it has. What might emerge? I've never heard anything like this done, so I'm just making this up. The horror of devastating change. This is a progression. The horror of devastating, changing weather patterns will continue with tsunamis, earthquakes, famines, floods, melting ice caps, personally affecting all of us. Toxic 
Contamination will increasingly affect our planet, our health, in new terrifying ways. Hunger will spread more, and we will see it more personally here and abroad. Foreclosures of homes will be continued. There will be more unemployment here, more homelessness. Hate speech and actions will grow. Fear will continue to grip so many. Homeland security measures will tighten up. And I envision the possibility that people like us could be put in prison camps. There might be martial law evolved in our country, and we might be put in prison camps, and I might be personally tortured, because that's a part of shock doctrine. I know that is a possibility for me. State and local government crisis is going to continue. Bottom up, fewer human services. Desperation for more people. Increasingly, more people are going to cry out in their suffering and pain, and they will begin to do demonstrations more and more against government policies. Activism will be on the rise out of people's desperate needs to do something. Police will crack down. Social change movements are going to grow out of the horror. Nonviolent civil resistance will increase. People who would never have thought of that will start doing it. As economic standards go down for the big majority of us, more begin to depend on themselves locally, acting more cooperatively out of necessity. More local food grown, people forced to simplify their lives, the bare needed necess necessities to have a decent life, more sensitivity to the needs of others. Nonviolent peace and justice groups increasingly will seize the opportunity to ground people involved in new activism, with the principles, stories, strategies of nonviolent social change. Uh, most people who wouldn't even think of nonviolent civil disobedience now, in the years ahead, will be doing it. People will become more creative in conserving energy, repairing their own clothes, uh, car cooling, new intermediate technology to meet human needs, not the fancy big technology of corporate America. Social media will be used in connecting the vital movements. Uh, while we go local, we are also global, inspiring one another. Production of junk food diminishes people a lot of such consumerism. Corporations, banks will begin to shrink. Their power diminish. Many go out of business because people won't be buying into it, like uh, things as they did the world markets. Uh, growing localization and self-sufficiency. Local production of things are needed that are needed will emerge more triumphant, a defeat for the rich. As people experience success, they will increase their hope-filled efforts. In the climate of crisis, people realize they must try other ways to survive. Uh, more and more people in communities will watch out for each other. More and more will make the connection between uh, learning to save, save lives or survive together is connected with challenging the institutions that dehumanize. Education and nonviolence will grow, emphasis on building the new world. No revenge and hate. Healing will take place as more people know each other face to face. And they're, so it's like a family, it becomes, the local community becomes a family. Uh, healing will grow. Neighborhood education, more and more holistic and creative. Uh, people will feel empowered to go to jail for their resistance in massive numbers. The widening police state will desperately try to hold on to power in a losing battle by then. As people experience success, in, they increase their hope-filled efforts. People around the world are learning what others are doing. They inspire one another globally. Creative nonviolence will be more revered. become as natural as eating and drinking and breathing air. Globally, a sense of solidarity will increase as people know that that's what they're doing. More creative cooperation emerge across boundaries and borders. Courage and determination grow with each increasing success. Eventually, people will experience the tide has changed. The world will then have become, in fact, a safer, more caring place for humans and other living beings. True peace will then become the norm, not the exception. With all this in mind, I say, the peace of Christ be with you. Thank you.